Most stories about frontier survival get exaggerated the farther they travel from the person who actually lived them. But this one stays remarkably consistent no matter who retells it. A lone mountain man, tucked somewhere in the Rockies in the late 1800s, survived winters that routinely dropped past minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, while neighbours barely a mile away struggled to keep their cabins above freezing. His secret wasn't a bigger fireplace or some mysterious fuel source, or even superior craftsmanship. It was a single stupid wall trick, something so simple that other settlers mocked him for wasting his time. Yet when people stepped inside his cabin in January, they felt a nearly 29 degree temperature difference compared to their own homes. If you're new here on the Prepper Historian channel, subscribe right now because this story isn't just a fun historical anecdote. It's a practical lesson in frontier engineering, thermodynamics, and survival thinking that still applies directly to off-grid living and modern prepping. Let's break down exactly what he did, why it worked, and how anyone, whether living in a rural homestead or a city apartment, can use the same principle to dramatically improve winter warmth and energy efficiency. This stupid wall trick was really an early version of a dead-air insulation system. Most cabins on the frontier were built fast and rough. Settlers dropped logs, chinked gaps with mud, moss or whatever they had, and hoped the fireplace would compensate for the drafts. But the mountain man in this story took a different approach. Instead of relying on a single wall thickness, he built a double wall with an intentional air gap between them. It added extra labour, and that's where the teasing came in. Locals called it pointless, slow, and wasted effort because they assumed warmth came from more wood in the stove, not from smarter construction. But what he created was essentially a 19th century thermal buffer. By trapping a measured space of still air between the inner and outer log walls, he prevented heat from racing outward and cold from racing inward. The key wasn't just the double layer. It was the fact that the air gap was sealed tightly enough to stay still, not circulate. Still air is one of the best insulators ever discovered. And without calling it that, he built a functioning insulation chamber decades before mass-produced insulation existed. To understand why this worked so well, you have to think about heat in simple practical terms. Heat always moves toward cold. A single cabin wall of logs, even thick ones, loses heat rapidly through conduction but a wall with a trapped air layer slows that transfer dramatically. The cold hits the outer wall, but then loses most of its momentum in the insulation gap before it can reach the inner wall. You know, modern tests on reconstructed cabins show that log walls alone can have an R value as low as 1 to 3. But if you add, say, a 1 to 2 inch dead air gap, the effective R value can jump significantly, enough to produce the kind of 25 to 30 degree interior difference that historical witnesses described. While neighbours were burning through wood piles by February, he still had enough split logs to last the season. Heating efficiency is survival efficiency, and he understood that long before the vocabulary even existed. The detail historians admire most about this story isn't really the construction, it's the mindset. Most settlers built cabins just to survive the season. He built one to control the environment. 
That shift in thinking separated the mountain men who merely endured winter from the ones who truly mastered it. This mindset, well, it applies directly to modern prepping. The winner in a crisis is rarely the person who exerts the most effort. It's the person who recognizes an overlooked principle and uses it to their advantage, even when others dismiss it. And that's exactly what happened here. So, you know, this trick isn't stuck in the 1800s. You can actually use the same concept right now in multiple ways, whether you're in a homestead, a cabin, or just a standard house. If you live off-grid or in cold climates, well, you can build a removable interior secondary wall panel using wood rigid foam or even heavy fabric stretched tight. Just keep a small gap, about half an inch to two inches, between the existing wall and the panel. Make sure to seal the edges with weather stripping so no air circulates. This right here creates your own dead air chamber. Now, if you live in an apartment, you can apply the same principle to windows, the biggest heat loss point in any home. Materials like clear acrylic panels spaced from the original glass create a still air buffer that behaves very similarly to this mountain man's double wall. Honestly, the interior temperature rise can be felt within hours. If you're building a shed, workshop, or off-grid cabin from scratch, you can take a page directly from him. Frame a second wall inside the first with a narrow air gap. Seal it. Keep it simple. The effect is immediate and profound. Steps are straightforward. You just add a surface that traps a still layer of air, seal the perimeter, and then, well, let physics do the work. Modern heaters are convenient, but they fail when the grid fails. And honestly, too many people assume warmth requires energy. What this mountain man proved is that warmth is better secured by preventing loss than by producing more. That principle is as valid today as it was in 1880. The double wall trick wasn't magic. It wasn't genius. It was basic frontier logic applied with patience. And while others spent their days cutting endless firewood, he spent his winter nights warm enough to rest, think, and thrive. If you want more deep-dive historical survival lessons delivered with real-world value, hit subscribe, share this with another history buff, and keep learning with us here on The Prepper Historian.